In this video, I'm going to show you how you can conditionally merge two tables inside of Power Query without actually using the Merge Queries feature. Curious? Let's have a look. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos. Now, let's have a look how we can do a conditional merge in Power Query. As an example, we're going to take this table over here where we have information about different invoices. So we have the invoice number, the description, and the invoice amount. And I would like to add a column with the cleaned up vendor names. So here in the description, you see we sometimes do have the vendor names. However, I want to kind of extract them. Now, I do have a second table where we have all of the vendor names and the location of the vendor. And what I would like to do is take the vendor names and join them to my invoice table based on certain conditions, because I want to check inside of the description column if the vendor name is in there and then show the cleaned up vendor name inside of a new column. Now, as a first step, let's create a list of all of the vendor names. So I'm going to insert a new step in my invoices query. And here I can simply type in vendor info. This gives me the table, just like in the other query, but I only want to have the vendor name. Okay, so if I want to create a list, then we can open the square brackets and just type in the name of the column for which we want to uh, create the list. So now we have all of our vendors. Let's rename our step. So right click, rename, and I'm gonna rename this step to vendors. Now we will be referring to this list quite many times and I don't want to load it every single time. So therefore, I'm going to buffer this list, which we can do with list.buffer and simply wrap it inside of it. Okay, and now I'm going to insert a new step where we can refer back to the step that we had before we created the list, which is the change type step. So now that is done, let's add a column where we return the vendor list for each row. Okay, so let's go to add column, custom column. Over here, this is going to be the vendors. And here I can simply refer to the vendors list. And you see now, when we click in the blank space right next to this nested list, we have all of our vendors. But I don't want to have all of the vendors for each row. I want to have this list filtered on the vendor name that's contained in the description column. Now to show you how we can filter a list, let's add a new step. So over here, next to the formula bar, add a new step. And here I just refer back to the vendors list. And now we can wrap that list in a function that's called list.select. All right, so here we have the list vendors and it needs two arguments. The first argument, is a list, which is the vendors list. And then the second argument is a function that returns true when we want to keep that specific vendor name and false when it's not. So it needs to be a function. Now, the way to write a function in an easy way inside of Power Query is by using the each statement. So we can say each item, and over here we can use the underscore parameter needs to be equal to, now, as an example, let's say Acme, okay? Now, I'm going to close my brackets, press enter, and you see it only returns that specific item in my list. Now, instead of using each with an underscore, which is basically just syntax sugar for a function, we can write a function with the operator sign. Now, how is that done? Let's replace this now with an opening bracket and closing bracket. And then in between, we write the, uh, the name for a parameter, which can be the underscore. And then we need an equal sign and a bigger than sign, which is the goes to operator, okay? And then we can use the name of the parameter, the underscore needs to be equal to Ahmed. Also works, okay? Now, instead of this underscore, we could also just type in vendor name as the name for a parameter 
and then I replace the underscore with the vendor name there as well. You see that would still work. Okay, so now that you know this, we can go here and adjust the condition that returns true or false. Okay, so instead of having vendor name equals Acme, I could also wrap this inside of a text.contains function. Now, what do I want to check for? I want to take the vendor name and this one needs to contain Acme. And then don't forget the closing bracket in the end and press enter. Now, over here, it still returns Acme works. Okay, so now we can take this list function, select it, copy it, and go back to our edit custom step. Now here, I want to edit this one. I'm just simply going to replace what we had there before, the vendors list, with a filtered vendors list. Okay, so let's format it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna put list select on the next row, then shift enter, shift enter. Okay, now here we need to update our condition. Instead of checking the vendor name if it includes Acme, I wanna check the description if it includes the vendor name, which is our parameter. Now let's click here on okay. And now you see each nested list is filtered on the vendor name that's contained inside of the description. Okay, now let's expand that vendor column into new rows, insert that step, and there you go. We did a conditional merge. Now that step that we created to show how the filtering of lists works, well, we can delete that one again. Now the beauty of this approach is that you can adjust the condition for the filtering and gives you maybe a little bit more flexibility than going for the merge option. But the question is, would it still be possible to do this with a normal merge? Let's have a look. Now here we are again at the beginning, but now I'm not going to use list.select and adding a new column, and, but I'm going to use the normal merge queries functionality. So let's go over here to home and then choose merge queries. And I'm going to merge my invoice table with the vendor info table. Now I want to do the merge on the vendor name and description. However, there's of course not an exact match. However, I could maybe get there as well with a fuzzy match. Now, here the default settings still do not give you any match. However, we can open the fuzzy matching options and then adjust the similarity threshold. So for example, 0 0.5 will give me still zero matches. Let's go down, down, down a little bit more. How are we getting there? So over here with 0 0.1, I already have nine out of 10 matches. So 0 0.05 maybe. 10 out of 10 rows, so I have to go very low. If I would just click here on OK, and then we can expand the vendor info column with the vendor name. You see that we almost get the correct result. The thing is that it creates over here a duplicate, uh, duplicate line when there are more than one match. So for example, here we have a vendor name GI International with GE International, which is almost the same. So we can adjust over here, our merge query step, and then put in for the maximum number of matches, a one. And click OK. Go to the very last step in your query. I see, it actually also does the job. However, if you're looking for a way to control the condition for the match a little bit more, then the first approach might give you a good alternative. This is how you can do a conditional merge inside of Power Query without actually using the merge tool from the ribbon. Now, maybe you have some other ideas or comments that let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like this kind of content, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.